Let's, uh, let's dig into those legal requirements. Joining us now is Dorit Rice. She's a law professor at the University of California, Hastings, where she specializes in vaccine policy. She's also a member of nonprofit vaccine working group uh, on ethics and policy. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, professor, it seems like there are gray areas some places, but in the private sector, it doesn't really seem that, that gray. It's, there's a, plenty of legal precedent with other types of, of vaccines for doing it. So, I mean, just comment on that, and then let's talk about some of the issues where it, it does get a little stickier. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about um, a more public uh, scenarios and, and maybe uh, colleges and, and maybe elementary schools with, with minors where I think it might get a little more difficult to, in terms of, of legalese. So as you said, in the workplace, we have a history of vaccine mandate. We've had, for example, healthcare employers requiring vaccines for their employees. Some restaurants also required hepatitis A vaccine. Uh, traditionally, in the United States, employment is at will, which means your employer gets to set many of the workplace rules. Uh, and vaccine ma mandates are a health and safety rule. They make the workplace safer, so they're not very controversial. In this case, one wrinkle is that these vaccines are still under an emergency use authorization, uh, which raises a question, can you mandate a vaccine under an emergency use authorization? The way the act is written, it's a little unclear, but there's good reason to say that the EUAI, the Emergency Use Authorization Act, only limits the federal government and doesn't say anything to private employers. In fact, that's what the recent federal court ruled. Uh, uh, professor, it's, it, it seems you can make the case that the individual in this case may have to um, give up some of his rights for the collective good, for, for the, the public health of, of everyone. And, and I, I, I certainly understand that. But at the same time, and, and I think a lot of federal agencies are well-intentioned and do their very, very best, but it does mean that the individual is ceding some of his rights and trusting these agencies that they're not going to cut corners, or even if it's not cutting corners, they could just be wrong about the long-term effects of some of these things. And, and, and I'm thinking about kids, you know, people under 18, where parents feel that uh, the risk-reward might be where the, 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 the risk of the disease might be less than what they perceive, whether it's myocardial, uh, you know, inflammation or, or whatever some of these things are. We just don't know at times. And you're ceding an immense amount uh, of, of authority to, to the government that's going to do its best, but the science might not always be what, what you think at the time. So you're raising three really important things. The first is a question of if an employer mandates the vaccine, is this a violation of rights? Remember that we're not talking yet about the government requiring the vaccine. We're talking about right. the private employer versus their employees. You don't have constitutional rights against your private employers. You may have some legal rights, for example, a right to an accommodation if you have a disability. But in a negotiation between two private actors, uh, first of all, the employer also has right. And second, uh, the idea is part of the bargain of the workplace is you agree to obey the workplace rules and you get a salary. That does mean that you're accepting the workplace rules. And if the workplace rules aren't th something you like, you're not giving up your rights. You're making a choice. Is this workplace worth, worth it? The other point you're raising, and again, it's a very important one, is uh, do we have appropriate regulation of vaccines? And as you're saying, no regulation is going to be 100% perfect. We have uh, in vaccines one of the most robust oversight uh, organ institutions, one of the most robust oversight apparatus that we have anywhere else. We have more than one agency looking at it. We have two expert committees that are independent from the agencies looking at it. And we have four systems to collect data on this. Again, that doesn't mean we know everything now. We never know everything about anything. Right. But we have data from, as you, uh, from over 160 million Americans who got the vaccine. Right. And as you're saying, when something comes up, 
we tend to identify it, even if it's rare. The myocarditis cases are rare, uh, and right. we identify them. The J and J blood clots are rare, and we identify them. Uh, the, the third thing you're raising is a question of uh, minors. Right now, notice that employment mandates don't apply to minors. Minors generally don't work. But as you're saying, later down the line, we may have mandates for school as we do for other vaccines. But I don't think we're there yet. First, I think uh, first school mandates are generally state level mandates. Private school may require a vaccine, just like other private actors, but states uh, will have to either go through the legislature or go to the Department of Health. And no state has been doing it yet. And I think they'll probably wait until full approval. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.